a tutorial on how to add fancy cool looking captions from an idiot anyways we go into premiere pro we're gonna click this t icon okay this icon is how you add text so then i'm gonna add pog champ that that's just the word that i'm gonna use premiere pro is not free that's the problem <laughs> we're gonna double click this we're gonna click this little arrow button under text and we're gonna pick a font do not pick a skinny font it will not look good trust me we're gonna pick a thick font thick fonts only urbane nice fonts okay we're gonna go scroll down and here we can add more effects if your text is gonna be centered i would recommend hitting the center button we're gonna click stroke okay this will add an outline to your text you can pick whatever color you want i recommend the color you choose for your outline to have a big contrast against the original font color okay so because this text is white i'm gonna use black for a stroke okay and i'm gonna make it 15. all right this is also a little bit big so i'm gonna make it like 70. this might be a little bit hard to see but well you could make it 10 too i just use 15 because i like bolder strokes but um i don't know if you can see here there's this tiny little circle with the cross in the center of the circle it looks like a crosshair this is let me drag this over here maybe it's easier basically when i hover over it you see that little icon by my mouse the the square with like the arrows pointing up down left and right this is the anchor point okay so when i scale my text it will scale based on where this anchor point is located if it's hovering over it i can drag this anchor point anywhere i want and then as you see here as i'm scaling my text it scales to that anchor point i think when you're adding text animations either the default bottom center like this or actual center center is fine don't put your anchor point in some weird spot. If you think your captions are bouncing around weirdly, it's probably because your anchor, anchor point is in an off position. We have it align over here, okay? We can align our text to the top, to the center, to the bottom, and then we can also align to the left, center, and right. Align wherever you want your text to be. Um, I like center captions, I will align center. And then I don't want any of my text to get cropped off, so this font is a, this text is a little bit low. So here we can adjust the position and the, the X and Y position. So this is the X position, undo. And this is the Y, it's lagging a little bit, there it goes. The Y position. So I'm gonna, you know, position it so that the bottom of the P's are not getting cropped off off the video. So now I have my text pog champ. Now how do we animate this, okay? To animate our text, we need to do something called keyframing. So keyframes is basically something that tells Premiere Pro for this text or for this word at this one point in time, I want it to be here. First off, we want to make sure that our text is selected. Also, if you guys dropped any questions in chat, I will for sure answer you. I am just demoing this for constant right now, but make sure we have it selected. If you select something else, then you're, you're modifying the other file. So because right now I have this video file selected, I will accidentally be moving this left or right, you know? So I want to make sure my text file is selected. And then we're going to go under text, but we're going to go down to here where it says transform, position and scale, okay? This is how I do my text animations. No gatekeeping. I am uncreative, so I just use the most basic thing possible, okay? If you hit the arrow keys on your keyboard, by the way, you can move your blue bar one frame forward or one frame backwards also this is not aligned okay whoops there we go so i'm gonna hit the arrow key once so i i move it one frame forward this looks good i'm going to click this i'm gonna click the timer position and scale so what clicking this timer does is it adds a keyframe also on the bottom here we can select the slider so here i can zoom in so that the frames are more zoomed in or if i go all the way out the frames are way more zoomed out. So if you want, I'm only editing the beginning, so I'm gonna zoom this in a little bit so that, you know, it's more noticeable the jump that we're making. Oh, I actually moved it three frames, whoops. I'm just gonna do this, okay? This is what I do. When I'm happy with the text, I don't start at the beginning, I keyframe forward one, and then we do, we click the clock. What this clock does is it sets a, a keyframe, okay? So I set a position keyframe and I set a scale keyframe. Position is the location on the X and Y axes as to where it's located. And scale is how big it is. So I'm keyframing both. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the right arrow twice. And I'm gonna hit these little buttons again. So now I've I've added the same keyframe. So if you still scroll through, it looks like nothing happened because we didn't do anything. 
But what I like to do is for scale, I like to make it bigger in the middle keyframe because that will give us a pop. So we're going to do like 103. So now if I scroll through, you see how like the text bounces big and then it gets like back to the regular size. And then for the first keyframe, I'm going to make the scale zero. So now if I play it through, etc. So I also you see that little like bounce? You see how it bounces in like that? Another thing, if you want to be a little fancy too, for the very first keyframe, we can also set the Y position lower. So, okay, I got to remember. Okay, bigger is lower. My bad. So we can scale We can do here and then we can scale this down and then it will look like it's coming from the bottom. If you do it that way though, so where if you want it to like from the bottom bounce up, I would move all the keyframes over one just so it like has more time to come up if that makes sense. So then let me play this through. So I also... Actually, it's not very noticeable, but so I also maybe if I move it over one more, I'm not a good editor again. So, oh, there it goes. Wait, I want it. Okay. So I also yeah. Here now you can see it like kind of bounce up from the bottom up a little bit. So I also and then another fun fact about Premiere Pro, you can just copy and paste the hell out of things. So again, the bottom bar. If we if we make the bar smaller, we zoom in. If we make the bar longer and we zoom out, it's uh it works. It's counterintuitive. Um, I don't know. That's how it works. Okay. It, for Premiere Pro, Alanius, thank you so much for the follow. Okay. If we have um an item selected, so now I have the text selected. If I hold Alt on my keyboard and it's Option on Mac, we click and drag. And then I let go. It will duplicate it with all of the keyframes and transitions we added. So now for this, I can, um, Boba is lit. I can change the text now. And then now let's play it. So I also see you see that bounce in? A week, you see it? You see it? Bam. So I just copied the next, um, I made a new text file, but it copied all the animation. So we don't have to go and animate every single piece of text that we add in. You just hit alt and then drag alt and then drag so then again if i want to add more words alt and drag please remember to edit uh for youtube it's in saturdays at 7 yeah. p.m all right look at that so i also anyways that's how i add my captions hopefully i remember to edit this and add it to youtube because i think this will be a good piece of content to throw up so premiere pro can also auto caption it's amazing i love the auto caption however with Premiere Pro's auto caption, you cannot add these fancy text animations. You have to use manual text files to do it. It's really annoying. If you want to auto caption in Premiere Pro, okay, this is a very, very long video. I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to make it just give me one second. I'm going to make a new file so it doesn't take as long. So if you want to auto caption in Premiere Pro, we're going to have our file here. We're going to click text and then we're going to click transcribe sequence. So audio analysis mix. You can also select individual audio tracks. So for instance, here now i pulled i pulled this section onto audio track two so what we can do if we hit transcribe if you only want to transcribe what the captions for one audio sequ um one audio track we can hit audio track one or audio track two or mix will try its best with all of the tracks please use auto caption before you add your music to your edits by the way otherwise it will try to transcribe the music too and it will make the transcriptions bad so yeah you cannot use keyframes if you auto caption, no. But auto captions is for lazy people like me. So I auto caption because manually adding captions looks good. It takes forever and it's a pain in the butt. All right, now we're going to hit create captions. OK, this is the settings that I use for captions minimum duration. This is for my TikToks. I use like 20. OK, and then you can also have presets. So I have preset styles already. If you don't have presets, then make them. Um, but we're going to click none for now. Anyway, so for TikToks, I use maximum length of 20, minimum duration of 1.2, and gaps between frames of zero and single lines. We're going to hit create, and then you're going to wait for the captions to load, and now you can manually edit the captions. Now we want to add a preset so that we can make our lives easier, and then for future captions, we can click the drop down under style and actually add a preset. So under text, you pick the font that you want to use. I used Urbane last time, so I'm going to use this one, use it again. We can here change the size of the text. I, I think like 70 is fine. I used to use bigger captions. You can also pick the zone. This is the location in the video file that it's going to be. You could pick top, top left, top right, center, center left, center right. Anyways, 
Um, I try to keep it like either up somewhere up here at the top or somewhere not bottom bottom because you don't want it to get blocked off by like the TikTok profile photo, all of that stuff. Maybe like down here. Okay. We can also add a stroke. Again, outlines are great. A stroke also is, is an outline, the same thing. I think it's like 10, we could use 15. You could also add a drop shadow. Oh, this looks so cute. Anyways, whenever you're satisfied with the track style, we can click the drop down here and then click create style and then title it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it Urbane, it's just the name of the font. And then once you click tr the style, it will automatically apply it to all of the, the captions you have up here. If you want to change your mind later and you want to modify everything, we can just highlight everything. Under the track style, you can select a different style. This is my older my older font style. This is the new one I just arbitrarily threw up. But yeah, and then that will just change everything together. If some of the captions are wrong, you click it, you double click it, it will open up the edit box and then we can edit. It is very aggressive with the punctuations it uses. I think having punctuations looks kind of ugly in captions, to be honest. So I go through and I manually delete all of my captions or all of the punctuation, sorry, out of my captions. So this looks way cleaner now. So I also stream on Twitch three days a week. Oh yeah, see, and I messed up. So I also stream on Twitch. So I also stream on Twitch three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays at 7 p.m. PST. I also stream review every single Saturday. So, so yeah, there you go. Punctuation is cringe. That's how you auto caption in Premiere Pro. However, again, with the auto captions, you can't add like the bounce in, bounce out effects, stuff like that, which is pretty annoying. But hey, you win some, you lose some, right? This is, it takes like literally two seconds to do this, but you can't add the fancy effects. But with the manual text thing, you can add the fancy effects. It just takes forever. Anyways, that is my dumbed down caption tutorial.